Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about yet another entry into phase four of the MCU and this is the first fourth solo film for a character in the MCU and that is Thor Love and Thunder starring Chris Hemsworth as Thor and Natalie Portman as the mighty Thor this time who is a great addition to the film. Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher amongst a lot of other great people. Tessa Thompson, Taika Waititi of course as the director and the voice of one of my favorite characters in the MCU being Korg and this is a movie that I was so so excited for so we're gonna be talking about spoilers for this film because I have a lot to talk about and if you have not seen it Definitely go watch it if you're a fan of the MCU, of course. If you like Taika Waititi, if you like this type of humor, I think you will enjoy it. Although I do think this movie is fairly flawed. This is definitely not my favorite MCU movie. This is kind of in the middle of the road for me. And so first thing is first, I want to talk about the, the grand, I guess, scale of this movie and what I think it is going to impact in terms of the MCU at large. And that is the Pantheon of Gods. And I think that is the most interesting thing this movie does in terms of its story, which is exploring what it means for the gods in the MCU and how humanity or how other, you know, I guess lower life forms look up to these gods and how the gods have essentially treated them and ignored them for so long. And I think that ties into Eternals, that ties into other stuff that Moon Knight did as well. And I think that's when people say they don't understand the direction that the MCU is going at currently, I think it's, it's very scattered on purpose. I think it's setting up four different phase one type of buildups to an Avengers type movie all at the same time. I think they're setting up, of course, the main big one, which is Secret Wars, which you all know Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was pointing towards. Loki was pointing towards some of that. A lot of the multiversal stuff, the grander scale stuff is all pointing towards that. And of course, there is these smaller scale things that the MCU is setting up on the side, like the Young Avengers with Miss Marvel and Kate Bishop in Hawkeye and all these other characters like the twins in, in WandaVision and all these other side things that they're doing to possibly set up to a Young Avengers film. And of course, the Thunderbolts, which is setting up with Falcon and Winter Soldier with that character in that show, the evil Captain America type guy. Of course, you have Yelena Belova as Black Widow, and you have the Abomination that was set up in Shang-Chi. So when you think about this movie in particular, what is this kind of leading towards? And I think it's kind of setting up a fourth category that I didn't notice until now, and that is the Pantheon of Gods. Like I said, the storyline that they're kind of setting up, that they're introducing in Eternals mainly, and Moon Knight, and now this, which is how the lower life forms look up to these gods and how these gods have been very kind of distance and kind of complicit in the, all the bad things that has happened because they don't do anything. And I love the portrayal of gods in the MCU thus far because it makes sense because we had this entire universe for three phases set up and all these gods have existed the entire time, but why have they not done anything? And I think that is what this is building up, especially with the post credit scene in this. Like I said, spoilers with Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso, one of my favorite characters in that show, being Hercules, being set up as the son of Zeus going after, you know, I guess taking on humanity and showing that they should fear the gods that they should really praise and look up to the gods because they need to be praised for because if they don't have that what do the gods actually have and so I think that is what this movie is setting up in terms of the grand scale of the MCU and how all of these four different completely separate things kind of come together by the end of phase five I'm guessing or maybe even six and how all these separate things making their own different type of Avenger films in the future culminates in the next end game type of thing and i think that is what is going on in the grander scale of the mcu and i really liked russell crowe as zeus in this movie because of course you know you have the people complaining that he's not like the zeus in Zack snyder's justice league which why are you even comparing because he hadn't even seen this movie yet because you don't know what they're doing with this character and i think his eccentric type of over the top and just really you know everybody needs to praise me this type of character that he is and the type of blindness that he has to the real problems happening in the universe when he's so blinded with his own hubris essentially and so i like that they're doing this with the gods especially with eternals and this and moon knight with them being very complicit in the bad things that have happened in the universe thus far and i think that is going to lead up to something really interesting with hercules taking on a lot of the humanity and having all these gods the good gods like thor going up against them and i think that is a very interesting place that the mcu is kind of setting up and kind of building up towards but getting more into the character arcs and story and the plot, in terms of this film itself, I think that is where this movie is kind of hit or miss. In terms of characters, I love every single character in this movie. Of course, I love Korg. He is one of my favorite things in the MCU. And by the end of the movie, with him being married to Dwayne, The Rock is kind of 
it's hilarious. I love Taika Waititi's humor and moments like that in this film. Of course, you have Natalie Portman coming back as the Mighty Thor, and this was a character that I was very excited to see on the big screen, making her return after, you know, Thor and Thor the Dark World, which she was never really given much to do in those movies, and so seeing her get such a massive role and it being very comic accurate with her actually having cancer and her going through that, and every time that she was wielding Mjolnir, it's actually making her human form even weaker and, and making her more susceptible to the cancer that is actively killing her and I love how they weave that storyline in with this lost love that Thor and Jane had in the time that they were apart for that eight years and them kind of rekindling that flame in this movie and the whole theme of this movie being love I really enjoyed all that stuff and it went in directions that I didn't think it was going to go which I think on rewatch I might appreciate this movie more in terms of the characters because I didn't know that they're going to go in the directions that they did in this film with killing Jane off kind of and I think that is another bone to pick I have with the MCU in general of killing people and then not killing them at the same time, but maybe they're setting something up cool, maybe it'll be worth it in the end, but I really liked her story in this film and her sacrifice that she did with, you know, grabbing Mjolnir one last time and going to help fight Gore at the end of this film with Thor and sacrificing herself essentially to stop Gore and, and stop, you know, this thing from happening and how her character really did relate to Gore in some very specific ways. And Christian Bale did amazing as Gore the God Butch. I really, really loved his intensity and I really liked his powers with the, with of course the Necro Sword which could kill gods with him going across the galaxy essentially killing all these gods because his daughter was killed and he crawled up to this oasis where his god was was residing and the god kind of just pushed all his problems aside like you all your suffering is to praise me essentially and that suffering is what you're meant for that is all you are you're here to suffer for your gods and that resentment that he had from that moment because of the death of his daughter caused him to go for that necro sword for the sword to call for him to him to use that to go after all these different gods and i love how they set up his character in the opening scene and it going throughout and how that mirrored jane's character because this sword is poisoning gore's character because he at the, his at his core he's trying to avenge the death of his daughter and we've seen many movies where you know the main character has a character that they're trying to get revenge for and they're the hero of the story and so in many ways gore the god butcher is not necessarily a villain he's a poison character kind of just shadow in the shadows of his own his own grief and his own anger and his own need for revenge essentially i really liked how christian bale played this character there's some goofy moments with him talking to the children that he kidnapped that i think he just ate up the scenery in those scenes and of course his fight scenes with thor and the mighty thor were really really entertaining this powers of summoning all these shadow demons was really cool the visuals of this character and his planet that they go to later on in the movie was great and that also led to the easily the biggest laugh of this movie for me besides Dwayne the Rock at the end of the movie which I still think is the funniest thing ever but when the when the screaming goats which they got at the beginning of the movie was you know just kind of a in the background kind of screaming the entire time but when these goats are flying up to this beautiful black and white planet and all of a sudden you know th you think that it's a planet very far away but then the goats just run face first into the planet because the planet is very small I was dying laughing it was one of those moments where you know it happens you laugh and then the movie kind of moves on, but you, you have not moved on from the joke yet. And so things are getting serious, but you're still thinking about the goat is running into the planet and screaming. It is, it is so funny. I love that joke so much. And of course, you have Thor's character, which I said tied directly to Jane's character. And I think his journey of self-discovery in this movie was pretty good. And I think on second watch, I'd appreciate it more because I didn't know the direction that they're going for because Korg's kind of overarching you know monologues over the movie of him telling the story of this this god of asgard this thor character and he's telling these stories to these kids and he's kind of explaining that he went from dad bod to god bod to sad go to sad bod because you know he had lost his purpose he didn't know what he was doing and so he essentially kind of gave up and was only living to have other characters ask for his help in battle and that's why the Guardians of the Galaxy were in the beginning of this movie and they just they just wanted to get away from Thor at all costs possible which was very funny to see and the Guardians didn't have too much to do in this movie you pretty much saw everything that they had in the trailers for this film which I guess it makes sense I do kind of wish that the release order didn't switch with the whole James Gunn situation with you know Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is supposed to come out before this movie so maybe Thor would have been throughout all of Guardians of the Galaxy 3 before this moment happened and maybe that could have been fun but it is what it is so Guardians do not have a big role in this but it did let you focus on Thor's character of course like I said going from God Bod 
or from dad bod to god bod to sad bod and by the end of the movie making his way back to dad bod because gore's daughter in this movie at the end of the film when he finally does reach eternity which was his goal to reach eternity so he can it's basically this wishing well where he can wish for anything and he wanted to wish for the death of all the gods because he thought they were complicit in the death of his daughter and that you know speech that's the mighty thor had jane foster saying that's you know you are not seeking for revenge you're actually seeking for love because that love for your daughter is what you had been fighting for this entire time so his wish was to get his daughter back when doing so his weakness finally took hold leading to the death of both gore and jane and their storylines kind of mirroring each other i thought was very very well done i think that is what taika waititi does very well at times in this movie which is balancing the stupid goats running into the planet and screaming with a really dark really cool you know fighting with the intensity of christian bale's performance and i think especially with the ending with the heartfelt moment with thor and the mighty thor and with gore and his daughter i thought all of that stuff worked really well the stuff that i was kind of iffy on this movie was the tone at times felt very very conflicting and i think that is something that i heard about this movie that i wasn't sure that i was going to be this bothered by but after seeing the film i really do get it because i do love taika waititi's humor you know if you haven't seen a lot of his films this is very very taika waititi even more taika waititi than thor ragnarok was and i think that is kind of at times a detriment to this movie because it can bounce between these serious moments to these really really cartoony goofy moments that's you know borderlines on spoof at times that i think it, I, it is funny the movie is very funny for the first half of the movie but i found myself not really caring because i was like oh this is just some silly goofy adventure and when there's a halfway point where you know they're at the pantheon of gods and thor begins to fight all the characters and throws thor or throws zeus's thunderbolt through his chest essentially killing zeus or at least you think he killed zeus in that moment from that moment on from that action scene on i think the movie vastly improved and i think maybe watching the first half of this movie again with the context of what they were doing with thor's character because i thought a lot of him talking to the children that were kidnapped was really goofy and silly but then when you see that they're kind of leading for him to kind of adopt the daughter of gore and because you know gore is dying and he says to protect his daughter because he won't be there to protect her i think that is an interesting way to take his character to actually turn him into a dad and so that is the thing that i was talking about that i really wasn't expecting them to do with this character and i think it makes sense now looking back at the beginning of the movie and maybe on rewatch i can see that thread kind of flow through the entire film and it makes sense you know on a second watch but after first watch it's one of those things where the first half of the movie i thought was kind of aimless that just it was setting up the characters in a good way i love the how they set up jane's character in the first half i love how they set up you know the the new asgard on earth with the play with with matt damon i thought that stuff was really funny a lot of really genuinely funny moments but i was struggling to care because it goes from this light-hearted goofy play to all of a sudden gore unleashing these shadow monsters to kidnap a bunch of children like five seconds later and it's just the tone of this movie just really was conflicting so although i do still think that taika waititi coming into thor was the best thing that ever happened to thor's character in the mcu i still think this movie is vastly more you know entertaining and better than the first two thor movies although i do think the first thor has its genuine moments i do prefer this style for his character more but i do like that balance that that thor ragnarok found with that character in that film much more than this one so this one like i said is kind of middle of the road for the mcu for me i really enjoyed the last half of the movie especially the ending of the movie with jane and thor i loved all the things with the pantheon of gods i love christian bale's character and i love the after credit scenes the first one of course setting up the ted lasso actor as hercules which perfect casting i cannot wait to see his character throughout the mcu and whatever role he ends up playing as this villainous character being hercules that sounds really fun and the the last after credit scene which like i said is the mcu killing characters and bring them back immediately jane i thought was for sure gone i was actually really heartbroken that she was gone but of course it shows her in the after credit scene walking through the gates of valhalla to going to idris elba's character as heimdall that is another character in the thor movies that has been severely wasted throughout the entirety of the series and so now seeing Heimdall and the potentiality of him coming back in some way is cool to think about but when you have all this lost in MCU and you just have everybody come back in whatever way whatever but at the same time I'm thinking about you know we're seeing Valhalla and we're seeing all the different afterlifes in the MCU like the ancestral plane like the the plane in Moon Knight where you know he was in the in the fifth episode that was really cool and then now it's seeing Valhalla seeing Asgard in that way that was really really cool to see so I wonder how these afterlife things are going to come into play because obviously they're not going to I don't think they're fully going to come back to life, but I think they're going to be able to help in some way from Valhalla. 
that could be interesting to see. And I'm glad that Jane, as this Thor character now, is still here in the MCU, that we will see more stories with her. I do like that. So what did you guys think of Thor Love and Thunder? Make sure you guys let me know in the comments down below all your guys' thoughts. And I'll make one more point here. I feel like this movie was a lot more geared towards children than I thought it would be because of the scene with all the kids, you know, getting the powers of Thor at the end of the film and fighting all the shadow monsters. And, but then you have like the weird stuff like, Thor being naked in the, the pantheon of the gods and all the women fainting from seeing his glorious naked body. So you have like all the kiddie stuff and all the more adult stuff. And it makes sense because Taika Waititi is a man child. So this film really is a man child of a movie. So what did you guys think of that stuff in this film? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see more reviews just like this one. I just uploaded my Stranger Things for volume two review a few days ago. So definitely go check that one out as well. So subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment down below, and I hope to see you all in my next one.